Hey guys, and welcome back to the FFP. My name is Christian, and today I'm gonna to be bringing you our week six injury update and fantasy outlook video. As always, timestamps will be down in the descriptions below so you can skip around to whatever you wanna hear about and listen to me talk as little as possible. I wanted to stop and just say thank you to everyone who's been supporting our channel. If you're watching this, if you like the video, if you're commenting, and if you're subscribed, thank you. You guys' support has been absolutely fantastic. Me and Rob really appreciate it and is really what has allowed us to do this. Without you guys, we're just two dudes who play way too much fantasy, at least now. We're able to make this channel, put out these videos, and we have a lot of fun doing it. So just wanted to, I guess, simply say thank you, and we really appreciate it. Uh, one thing I want to say is we're going to be doing some fantasy outlook in this video. I'm going to stick mostly to the injuries and do fantasy outlook um, somewhat brief because this video can't be too long because this video comes out sort of last minute for a lot of you guys Friday night. Most of you won't be seeing it till Saturday. Um, we can't overload this video with information and make you guys sit through two hours of content. So I try to keep it around a half an hour in length. That being said, because it is a bit shorter and nothing goes extremely in depth, the comment section is there for a reason. And that's what I was just gonna say. Leave a comment down below. We will try to answer that as much as possible. Just spend a half an hour, an hour earlier answering some questions on our start sit video. And that's really what this video is. It is a continuation of our waiver wire and start sit videos, giving you update on the information of these guys' health that we couldn't give you before because we simply needed more time. But as always, I'd like to kind of beat a dead horse and say what I say every week, which is let's quit wasting time and get right into it. We're going to start off with the quarterbacks. All right, guys. So the first thing I want to say before we can get started is there's not going to be a lot of quarterbacks we're going to talk about this week. I'm not going to talk about guys like Cam Newton or Sam Darnold because we already knew in our previous videos that Newton would be out and Darnold would be playing. So that's just to kind of save ourselves some time. Mostly pretty much only going to be talking about the players who are in that in-between range. Um, and so you can find that with clarity. If a guy is not marked as anything to be injured on your fantasy site, or if he's marked as out, probably not gonna be talking about him and you can safely assume either he's playing start him or whatever, or that he is not playing and obviously you can't play him. But first quarterback we gotta talk about is Drew Brees. So Drew Brees won't be playing. He's still got that thumb injury, but he came out and said that he has high hopes to be throwing a regular size football sooner rather than later. He continued to say that he is fast tracking things as quick as he can, and he'd like to be back in a couple or a few weeks. So he will not be playing this week, but at 30% available, it's time to pick this guy up and stash him on your bench. By the time he is back in playing, Teams with really low records, they're going to have priority over you on the waiver wire, and they're going to get him. So go pick him up now. This is a great quarterback. He's got great guys to throw to. I mean, he's a good fantasy option. So Drew Brees at 30% available. Wanted to kind of put that out there for you guys. Um, my expectation is, like I said, he'll be missing this week. My expectation is that you'll probably miss next week as well. My expectation, I've said that a million times now, but is that he should probably be back probably three games from now. Um, I'm going to say expectation one more time, but uh, again, just to say kind of this is where we're lining up his return time. But another guy to talk about is Mason Rudolph. He is out this week. Now, I talked about not talking a lot about players who are plain and simple like that, but I don't think that a lot of people knew that when we put out our start sit video, that was not so much a fact. This of course has fantasy outlook wise, a pretty negative impact on everyone playing for the Steelers, Julius Smith Schuster and James Conner especially. So definitely guys to maybe consider benching this week as the Steelers are down to their third string quarterback. And I believe the final quarterback we have to talk about is Gardner Minshew, struggling with a little bit of a groin injury. He was added to the report as a limited participant in Thursday's practice. However, it's not too much of a surprise. Um, however, you know, because they simply want to keep him healthy, they don't want to overuse him. And he did participate in Thursday's practice. Um, he's got a great matchup this week and he's played really well. My expectation is that Gardner Minshew will play and he's actually a pretty good start this week if he does play. I would check that game time just to be safe as I've said this in our channel um, in the past. You know, half an hour before the game, Sunday morning, check everyone's stuff. Just make sure, you know, really do your due diligence. That's what good fantasy owners do. And this is a tough guy, too. That's the other thing. He's not a baby. There are some quarterbacks like Tom Brady who get really knocked for not being very tough quarterbacks. This is not him. Get this. In college, he was a, a freshman. 
and he played one game. And if you play two games as a freshman, if you get out there for any snaps at all, then what you have to do is you don't get to be a redshirt freshman. That counts as one of your years, and you're only given four years playing in the NCAA. Uh, but you can play one game coming in, filling in for injury, whatever it might be, and still qualify as a redshirt freshman. And after his first game, it looked like he may be playing a little bit in the second game. And so he grabbed a hammer and tried to break his own hand and was tough enough that he failed to do so. Um, that is one, just a weird story of the already legend that is Gardner Minshew. But tells you how tough this guy is and how dedicated he is to football. He is going to be playing this week, at least by what I think. However, as always, and I just mentioned it, 1130 before the game start, check your lineups and be smart about that. But that's all I have to say for the quarterbacks. Pretty short and pretty simple. Let's move on to the running backs where things get a little bit more murky. All right, so let's get this started off talking about Todd Gurley, who's struggling with a little bit of a quad issue. Now, he was uh, remained sidelined on Thursday at practice. Now, the good news is his injury has nothing to do with his knee, and that was really the big concern coming into this season. And if it was his knee, I'd be far more concerned. I am less concerned long-term because it is quad and his knee seems fine, so that's great news. However, he is currently marked as doubtful for their Week 6 matchup versus the 49ers. Now, I love the language that they use to report injury because plain and simple, doubtful means it is doubtful he will play. And this is a situation where I'm going to say to Todd Gurley owners, start looking and considering another option. Of course, Todd Gurley with two touchdowns last week has been very phenomenal. Is a guy that if he does play this week, you have to start him. You absolutely do. So as I mentioned with our quarterbacks, 1130 come Sunday morning, check your lineups, check whether or not he'll be playing. These teams are required, I believe an hour before, to put out whether or not these guys are going to be playing their active and inactive list, as it is called. So you are able to know that and change your lineup ahead of time. Uh, but again, I would begin looking for another option at this point. Moving on to Jamal Williams, who struggled with that concussion and missed last week. He has been a full participant in practice this week and looks like he is scheduled to return this week um, in this week six matchup against the Lions. Now, there's a few things to know. It is unclear whether or not he has passed the NFL's concussion protocol. So here's what I'll say about that. We haven't heard anything, which tells me that there's a chance he hasn't taken the test this week. If he doesn't pass the concussion protocol, he is not allowed to play. Um, and so this does make me nervous. Again, this is a situation to check. However, here's what I'm expecting. If I'm an NFL coach and I have my running back, Jamal Williams, and I want him to play on Sunday, I'm going to make that concussion protocol. I'm going to push that off till as late as possible. Now, I'm not 100% certain when they take those tests, if they're allowed to take the test on Saturday or if they're forced to take it on Friday at the latest, but I'm going to push that off till as late as possible, maybe Friday night, Saturday, or Saturday night at the latest if I could to give this guy as much time to recover from his concussion as possible. So I imagine we haven't heard anything because they just want to give this guy even more time. However, he is trending in the right direction. The nice thing about Jamal Williams is even if he does start in this game, even if he is playing, you're not going to start him in your fantasy lineup, so that's not a concern. Really is a notable thing because it will subtract from Aaron Jones's value, and that's why he has a fantasy impact on that game. But we will move on now with Adrian Peterson. The Redskins are expected to feature Adrian Peterson in their backfield um, in Week 6 versus the Dolphins. Interim coach Bill Callahan uh, came out and first of all he said that and he's talked about really featuring Adrian Peterson this week uh, but he's also a guy who came out and said that you know in 2019 in the modern day NFL that we are living in he came out and said that running is more about volume and attempts than efficiency um, this means a few things one this is a good sign for Adrian Peterson's volume. Adrian Peterson has not had a great yards per carry, um, but he's always been a guy throughout his career that's kind of somewhat struggled in that area. Not because his yards per carry has been bad, but here's what you'll see with Peterson. He'll get a one yard carry, he'll get a carry for loss, he'll get a three yard carry, he'll get a two yard carry. His yards per carry will look awful. Suddenly late in the fourth quarter, he will bust a 60 yard touchdown. Now he's a little bit old and I don't imagine he's gonna have a massive day, um, but that's sort of the running back that Bill Callahan likes, where you're just going to ground and pound and you're gonna wait for that breakout run. You're gonna wear that Dolphins defense down, which is a good matchup this week. And boom, you're going to wait for your shot and your running back is going to take that one explosive run for a touchdown and boom, absolutely worth all the carries you gave him. That at least was the way it seems. And again, this is gives a bit more confidence to Adrian Peterson this week, who 
um, in light of all the injuries and bye weeks may be a guy to consider starting. However, that of course 100% depends on your roster. So if you are on the fence about Peterson in your lineup this week, that's what the comment section is for. Uh, we will continue on with Alvin Kamara now, who is questionable. He was added to Thursday's injury report with an ankle issue. He practices, he, excuse me, he practiced in limited time on Thursday. However, he did not practice in the uh, portion of Thursday practice, which is open to the public. So for those of you who don't know, the media and the public are allowed to attend NFL practices, but on some practices, they are limited to only going to half. And so... Uh, Alvin Kamara practice in the half that the media couldn't see. Uh, Coach Sean Payton came out and said that he is not going to discuss on Alvin Kamara's absence in practice. Um, and so this is going to be a game time decision, decision for you guys to check. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, as far as the impact this has, Latavius Murray, we said this in preseason, he is no Mark Ingram. However, if Alvin Kamara does miss this game, he's probably your fill-in option this week. I assume many of you handcuffed Murray to Alvin Kamara, though maybe not. And of course, with Drew Brees out, that is another thing that impacts this game. Um, I don't know. I hate to do predictions on running backs or, excuse me, on any player as to whether or not they're going to be playing this week and in a, uh, an especially murky situation while wow, my apologies very struggling to get through this video but Alvin Kamara is a very confusing situation and it is 100% up in the air I have no predictions as to whether or not this guy is going to be playing this week let's continue on with David Johnson another big name running back um, who is currently banged up and has some questions this week now Cardinals GM Steve Keim, I believe that's how you say it, uh, said that he was encouraged by David Johnson's progress and his recovery, and they even said that he has a quote-unquote chance to play in week six against the Falcons. Uh, he is struggling with a back injury, and he did return to practice on Friday, so that is great news. Again, this is a situation to monitor based on news. However, the phrase, a chance, is very, um, I guess, discouraging as far as the fact that that sounds like more likely than not he won't be playing. I think another reason that he won't be playing is that Chase Edmonds has been playing well. Over the last two weeks, Edmonds has 14 carries for 105 yards, a touchdown off of 7.5 yards per carry. So if there's any question marks about their stud back David Johnson, they will probably opt to keep him out and give some time, time to Chase Edmonds. If I'm the Cardinals coach, uh, Cliff Kingsbury, I wanna see what I got in this guy. I wanna know what he can do as a full-time starter. So that's definitely something to, uh, to take a look at. The Redskins, uh, as I mentioned earlier, they're expected to feature Adrian Peterson this week against the Dolphins. That is a great matchup. And finally, Chris Carson. He was added to the Seahawks injury report on Thursday. However, he did practice a little bit. He, you know, partial practice as we talked about with Kamara. He's got a shoulder issue. Now, to break this one down, I am expecting that he will play this week. He has been far more the effective back for the Seahawks. Um, than Rashad Penny has been. It is the first time all season that Chris Carson has been listed, so he's not a guy who's been struggled with injuries all week long. He was also practiced in the portion of practice that the media is allowed at, and is a huge sign that they did that, is a major sign that his injury is not serious. As always, with anybody who's banged up who was put on this list, it's something to check before the games start, but it looks like he is going to play. I would be semi-confident. Of course, you're never too confident, but I think he's going to play this week. It's just a situation to monitor. Um, unless I missed anyone, that is all the running backs that we have got for this video. Now we're going to continue on to um, the biggest part of the video, which is the wide receivers. This is going to take quite a while, and there's a lot of names to get through, but let's just dive right into it. So why don't we start off with the ever confusing Kansas City Chiefs wide receiver situation because this is yet another week that is very confusing. So we'll start off with Tyreek Hill. Uh, the NFL's Ian Rappaport has said that there's a lot of optimism surrounding Tyreek Hill recovering from his clavicle injury and that there's a actually a fairly highly likely chance that he would be playing in week six versus the Houston Texans. This is, of course, great news, and he's been trending upward. And like I just mentioned, I think there's a lot of optimism, excitement, and even some expectation that he will be playing this week. Obviously, the Chiefs desperately need him as Sammy Watkins is currently marked as doubtful. There's a very high chance that Sammy Watkins does not play this week. 
I'm going to address that more later, uh, but this is one reason that it, you can feel more confident that the Chiefs are going to try to rush him in and play him this week. They're not going to rush him too fast, don't get me wrong. They're not going to try to re-injure this guy, um, but as, the minute they feel like he's ready, he's going out there that second. Uh, if he does play, start him as a wide receiver too. I mean, Rob talked about this a little bit and this idea of he's still coming back from this injury, and so I don't think we can quite put him as a wide receiver one just yet. Um, but he still is a starting wide receiver at wide receiver two. The targets alone will ensure that. Skip on down now to uh, Sammy Watkins. Like I said, he is doubtful. And it's an interesting situation because if Watkins misses and Hill misses, then you absolutely have to take a shot on one of these guys, Pringle, Hardman, or Mar uh, Demarcus Robinson. These guys have really traded off having big weeks. It is, uh, somebody in our comment section described it as a carousel, and that is really probably the perfect definition of what's going on there. Now, if Tyreek Hill plays, Sammy Watkin plays, we tend to avoid starting any of those three um, lower wide receivers on that team because there's just no security. One week, Hardman had a big week. Um, Demarcus Robinson has had some time when he was big. Last week, it was Pringle out of nowhere who had a big week. And it's just really hard to bet who's going to play well. I mean, what team has as much talent as Demarcus Robinson, McCall Hardman, Sammy Watkins, Travis Kelsey, Damian Williams, LaShawn McCoy, Tyreek Hill? I mean, it is loaded with talent. And so if either of those guys, Hill or Sammy Watkins, plays, probably tend to avoid those guys. But if both those guys miss, this is a shot that I would take on one of those guys. Put a McCall Hardman out there or something like that, um, who Rob... Um, said to me, feels like he uh, is probably the safest wide receiver start this week. But we'll move on now. That is my wrap up for the Chiefs situation. That may be unsatisfactory for you guys because it is a very confusing situation right now. But I don't want this video to drag on as always. Got to save some time to talk about other players. And the other guy I want to talk about is Marquez Hollywood Brown. Now, Coach John Harbaugh confirmed that he is struggling with an ankle injury and is in fact a game time decision, which only goes back to what I mentioned earlier as far as checking your stuff before the game start. And that seems to really be the theme this week. I don't know what it is. It just absolutely seems to be like this week, whatever you do, even if your guy's healthy, just check, just be safe. But anyways, um, he has missed a third straight practice on Friday. The team was expecting him to practice on Friday and he didn't quite get to uh, get to practice due to injuries. He just wasn't quite ready. And so this is a guy that I'd strongly lean towards sitting. Um, he is really struggling. He's averaged only four catches for 45 yards this year. His targets have dropped from 13 to 9 to 7 and down to 5. He came on strong week one, but every single week Lamar Jackson has struggled a little bit and a little bit more, and it has been a seriously negative thing. Now, if Brown does play, or excuse me, if Brown does miss, which it looks like he will uh, very, there's at least a very good chance that he will miss. I want to want to watch my words very carefully. If I say anything that's uh, even slightly off, people will get frustrated. But uh, if he does miss, Willie Sneed gets a huge boost in his value as he is the clear number one guy when Brown is out and kind of sneaks in there as a medium to low end wide receiver three simply based off of volume. He's been very productive throughout his career, at least um, as far as goes. Far from being this elite fantasy guy, but there are a lot of guys who come into the NFL and um, are in and out in a few seasons. You can't trust their hands. They're not veterans. This guy is a veteran wide receiver who's far from an amazing wide receiver, but he is a trustworthy guy. And when your number one wideout is out, the next guy you go to is really the trustworthy guy. We'll talk more about the tight end situation in Hayden Hurst and everything that's going on there, but we will skip that for now and continue on with Emmanuel Sanders, um, who is a full participant in Thursday practice. He's been struggling with a knee injury, but he looks healthy, and being that he was a full participant in practice, things are trending upward. looks like um, you could play him this week. Now, he's had two weeks back-to-back -back that weren't as productive, so starting him carries some risk. I would call him a wide receiver three. Deshaun Jackson at 30% available is a guy to consider. Now he's had this abdomen injury, which has sidelined him and kept him out of Friday's practice, uh, but he's someone to grab and pick up. It's an interesting situation. We saw week one how productive he can be. Um, the potential is there that he's a guy that you at least need to stash on your bench. If he plays, consider starting him. Uh, pick him up now before everybody else does. Even if he doesn't play this week, probably won't play. This. I, I should clarify that. Yeah, I don't think he's going to play this week. Week. But he's a guy that, again, if you wait till next week, the people in your league who suck, they're going to get him. So go pick him up now and get him on your benches. In a few weeks from now, he's going to be, uh, at least he looks like he could be a good start looking at what he did in week one. 
Now we will update Aaron Rodgers. Um, he is struggling with a bit of an injury, but he was limited in practice. It looks like he is going to play. That's why I didn't mention that in the quarterback section of this video. I don't think it is something we need to talk about too much. The big thing that we're talking about here with the Green Bay Packers is, of course, Devontae Adams, who has got this turf toe injury. Um, he came out and said that he is not optimistic about his available availability for Monday's game. This is a tough situation, guys, because it is a Monday game. And so if you put him in your lineup and wait till Monday and he doesn't play, then you just didn't get a wideout that week. So I'm going to say put someone else in your lineup. He already said he's not excited about it. Turf toe is a lingering injury. He said that there is, you know, uh, let me read that again, that he is not optimistic, excuse me, for him to play this week. Guys, I'm expecting he won't play. He's expecting he won't play, and you should expect that he won't play. So we'll keep that nice and simple. The guy to look at is Marcus Valdez Scantling. He's limited with a hamstring and calf issues on Thursday, uh, um, but it would appear they know they're going to have him as a big role in their offense in their Monday game. And so it, uh, I would imagine, and it appears such, that the Packers are simply limiting his reps so he is 100% in this game as he's going to be need to be the Packers' lead wide receiver. And good for him, he has got an extra day to recover. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, I probably should have talked about this when we talked about Emmanuel Sanders, but we'll continue on with Broncos guys coming back to them and Cortland Sutton with his uh, leg. That's what they're calling it. They're not clarifying much more than that, but he was upgraded to full participant in practice on Thursday. He does play a very good Titans defense this week. Uh, but he has looked better and better every week. In fact, lately he's been looking like a wide receiver one. Um, it's a tough matchup, and he is bit banged up, bit struggling. I would play him as a wide receiver three if he does play, and it indeed does look like he will. However, that is not a guarantee. There's a reason he's being mentioned in this video. Chris Godwin, who's struggling with his hip, has been upgraded to a full participant in th Thursday's practice as well. I've mentioned this in the past. Thursday's practices are very important to know. Um, as far as whether or not guys return. There's not much to say about this guy. He is a just a stud top five wide receiver right now. He's absolutely been dominant. And it's great because with Mike Evans there, who do you assign the number one cornerback to? This guy's going to be fine. You start him if he plays. No concerns about that. Brandon Cooks, who has been struggling with that concussion, is expected to play against the 49ers this week. I will say no more on that and keep that simple. Because I want to talk about Julio Jones now, who also has a hip injury, but he returned to practice on Thursday, so that is good news. He was limited in Thursday's practice. However, he seems to be always on the injury report, um, but he rarely misses time. And so this is a guy who, this is a situation that he's really been in every single week of the season. Now, if by chance he misses, Mohamed Sanu and Calvin Ridley get major, major upgrades in their value. In fact, both Sanu and Ridley should be started if Julio Jones misses. However, it seems like he's gonna play. Um, at least that's my prediction. Um, again, I hate to make predictions. Don't go by that. Go by what you see Sunday morning before the games. But um, if he does play, Drops Ridley down to a wide receiver three, and Sanu as probably a low wide receiver three with a bit of a PPR boost because he's uh, maybe not a huge PPR guy, but he's a consistent guy, consistent in his catches. Christian Kirk, ankle practice on Thursday. That's good. He's coming back. Seems like he is trending in the right direction and should be playing in his week six matchup after missing last week with a sprained ankle. AJ Green, finally hearing some news about this guy. He will practice very limited basis on Thursday. Excuse me, he did practice uh, very limited. Now, he's getting closer to his return. He's 25% available. Definitely got to pick up now while you can. However, he's probably not going to be playing this week. Rob did the research on Golden Tate and would like me to talk about him. We, we advise sitting Golden Tate, and we advise, I even advise one person to drop Golden Tate. And yet he went out there, he had six catches, 101, uh, excuse me, 102 yards and a touchdown. First thing we want to say is our apologies if you missed out on your bench. I hate to have talent on my bench, but we 100% stand by our research. Now, I'm going to talk about this for a few minutes and really break down why you still can't trust Golden Tate. Um, one, to explain to you guys, so for some people, who kind of know why we made that decision to say sit him last week, but also to let you know that, you know, even going forward, we don't trust him. I don't think that this changed a thing. This is a guy who um, really played in an interesting and particular game that he will not be playing in. The first thing to note is that he will not have the same volume in the future that he had this game. 
Sterling Shepard was out and he became the number one wide receiver. Now there was some questions as to whether Cody Latimer or Golden Tate would be the number one wideout. Golden Tate became the number one wideout over Latimer. Um, probably mostly do not, not 100%, but I think a, a portion of that comes down to the fact that Cody Latimer is not quite a great route runner, great with his hands. Golden Tate is more of a veteran consistent guy in that aspect. Um, but Sterling Shepard's going to come back and he will be the number one wide receiver. Golden Tate will fall down to the slot role and Cody Latimer will retain more of that deep ball threat sort of role. Evan Ingram will return. He is a stud wide receiver as well, probably the best receiving player on that team at this point. And heck, Barkley is still out. When you have your best receiver, your best tight end, and one of the best running backs in the NFL all going to be coming back and, and out this week, you have to imagine that those numbers were very skewed. They also got completely destroyed um, by the New England Patriots, and they were throwing the ball all game long. This gave him a much more high volume than he's normally going to get. They're going to play bad teams like they played in the past, like when they beat Tampa Bay, and they're going to be throwing the ball less, especially when Barkley comes back. On top of that, Daniel Jones threw just 160 yards and three interceptions. So the quarterback play was far from great. This is, again, definitely a situation where Tate proved himself to be a veteran with still some value, and he should be rostered. But shouldn't be started. We want to slow down kind of that hype train and just to let everyone know what's going on again. With all those guys coming back eventually, when they all three of them are back, his value will disappear quite a bit. Uh, so again, just don't overreact. Um, this was a big week for him. You hate to leave a lot of points on your bench, but he's not going to do this every week. Maybe this coming week if, both, if all those guys continue to be out, but I doubt it. Moving on now to the Patriots, who we just mentioned, Josh Gordon. According to the NFL's Ian Rappaport, Josh Gordon did not suffer a major knee injury in Thursday night's Week 6 win over the Giants. And so that's an interesting situation. Of course, he already played his game this week, so you already made your decision whether or not to start him. But that is a good sign saying that he will probably be playing in Week 7. Of course, if he is banged up, that only adds value to other guys on that roster, the biggest one being Julian Edelman. That right there, actually, I believe I'm kind of surprised, is our wide receiver wrap-up. That is everything that you need to know on the guys that you need to know about. As always, there's like 600 wide receivers in the NFL, so if we missed a guy you wanted to hear about, please ask in the comments down below. We didn't talk about quite everybody, only the more fantasy relevant players, simply because we don't want this video to drag on. But now we are going to move on to the tight ends, and hopefully we'll pick up the pace on this video and make sure it's not too long. Again, to always try to aim for that half an hour mark. But continue on with this video. All right, so we're going to wrap up this video now with, I believe, just three tight ends to mention. The first and probably most notable being Hunter Henry um, with his knee injury that he's been struggling with. He is questionable for week six. Um, looks like he might play. However, if he doesn't, oh well. He's 50% available, and that's the biggest reason we got to talk about this guy. Pick him up now while you can. You are going to absolutely regret not stashing this guy on your bench, not picking up now, not picking him up now, especially if he does play. If he doesn't play, you may have another week to go pick him up. But if he does play, he could very well have a good week and he will be gone. So that is good to know. Again, not necessarily a start sit thing, but want to make sure that you guys are absolutely on top of that. A lot of people think that once the first game starts that all of the waiver wire moves lock up. That is not the case. You could go pick this guy up right now even though the thursday games have happened the other guy to uh, talk about vernon davis now he practiced again thursday giving a lot of people hope that he may be playing this week and with a good matchup and injuries to some tight ends people i know rob in particular was considering maybe picking him up and just plug and playing him for a week just to get by because he was missing evan ingram and in fact so am i but he did not pass the NFL's concussion protocol test, and he is out this week. So you have to look for another option. Now, um, Sprinkle, that's his name, the Redskins tight end. Sprinkle is really their only option at this point for the Redskins, but he is simply not talented enough, and he hasn't have big enough of a resume to trust this guy, so don't start him. I know some people like to get fancy. They love their deep sleepers, but he's not worth it. He's not going to have a big day. Finally, TJ Hawkinson, according to Dave Burkett of the Detroit Free Press, he is trending towards playing against the Packers in week six. That is good news. Seems like he is going to play. Hawkinson is, so not too huge worries on that. Although he did struggle uh, with that bit being banged up after he tried to hurdle a guy and had the whole shoulder head thing 
Uh, not his best move, probably learned his lesson, try not to hurt old people again. Every year, guys try to get a little too fancy with it. A couple years ago, I think it was Antonio Brown kicked a punter in the face. I mean, hurdling just does not work in the NFL, I'm telling you. So that is our tight ends. I'm gonna wrap up things here for a few more seconds, and then we'll be done with the video. So I wanted to stop and mention that it is actually snowing outside right now. I'd love a shout out from you guys. Let me know if it's snowing where you're at, because I swear snow's not supposed to come till winter. We haven't even hit um, Halloween yet, so that is absolutely putting a damper on my mood. But uh, but. On the other side, my mood is great. And I wanted to stop again, like I did at the beginning of the video and just absolutely thank everyone. If you're watching this video all the way through to the end, I absolutely appreciate it. You guys make a huge difference and have a huge impact on our channel and on our lives. We really, really, really appreciate it. I think I've used that word like six times already. But again, what you guys do for us, the support for this channel has been fantastic. And like I said earlier, we wouldn't be able to do it without you. So. We just wanted to give a shout out to you guys. You guys have been awesome. Your likes, your the times you subscribe, your comments, all of that, um, it, it's really big. It's really important to us. So again, thank you. I will quit um, saying those same words over and over again. Just wrap up this video as always. Leave a comment down below and we will do our best to help you out before your games on Sunday. God bless and take care.